Now, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Philippians, chapter 4. Philippians, chapter 4. This morning, I want to see about thankfulness. Now, I'll be looking at this somewhat later today as well. And definitely, as we're thinking about today, I said that I'm thankful that we can be together again as a church family. Can I have the limitations of only 10 people at a time? But now there can be 200, or 200 at a time. And so we're thankful for that. We have the Lugano service this morning. Got a good number of people here for that one. And now there's more coming today, and more still on the way I go. Uh, there's always something to be thankful for. The Bible says to be thankful for all things, for everything. And we need to stand fast to the Lord. Philippians 4, 1, Therefore, my brother, dearly beloved of all four, my joy and crown, so stand fast to the Lord, my dearly beloved. That's in Philippians 4, 1. We need to stand fast to the Lord, and one of the things that can help us in this is this area of thankfulness. I want to say that not only this morning in the Bible study, but also this next hour. And so I'm going to take just a few moments um, to mention a couple of things. And then also I'll give you an opportunity, if there's something you're thankful for, that you can share that with us today. Because, you know, there's been some challenges people have faced. With this lockdown, some people have lost jobs. Um, even now, schools are still shut down until January. Uh, there's been challenges at home, at work, in other areas. But also there's been blessings, I know. Maybe you've seen how, even in hard times, God can provide for you. You still have a place you're sleeping in. You still have food you're eating. <laughs> you still have friends who are there for you. Uh, there's always our salvation to be thankful for. Life itself, health, a job, family, friends, church, the Bible, God's love, God's mercy, our country. Uh, and so let's just take a moment this morning I know for myself, I'm thankful for my family. Mm -hmm. My family at home, my wife, my children, um, other family members, and also my friends, I'm thankful for my church. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it was challenging having only 10 people at a time before, but I was thankful for that also. <laughs> I was missing our church family uh, being able to be together. And I'm very thankful today that we can come together as a church family and to worship our Lord here. Um, we're still doing the services, we're still recording them, we're doing them online, we're doing them live now, we're starting to, we're working on that. That's something else I'm thankful for. That's something we've been wanting to do for a long time, but coronavirus kind of pushed us into it. <laughs> it kind of speeded up our schedule. It's something not only we wanted, but I think God wanted it too. Okay? And now, people who are not feeling well, people might be traveling, even other people in other countries, huh? not just our church family, but can even watch the message and hear about the goodness of God. Can hear about how they can be saved. Can hear how we can be encouraged. So there's many things to be thankful for. But let me ask you this. Is anyone here this morning? Now, we're not gonna, don't take like five or ten minutes or nothing. Just, you know, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, something. A minute or two. And if there's something you're thankful for. But Pastor Charles is always thankful. Don't we'll start with him. What's something you're thankful for? You say 10 minutes? Yes, we have 30 minutes. I think it's your time. I think it might be 29 now. <laughs> I pray you to go, Lord. Yeah. God has been fascinated. He has worked miracles in my life. You know, when the president declared the lockdown, he thought it would be end in the first announcement. But he kept on postponing till today. Some departments, some work, some offices are not yet open. But they have been there for me. They have been providing for me. There is this thing they call curfew. Fortunately, I was, God helped me, and I was put in the essential work. I could walk and drive around town, even at night, being an official work, uh, essential worker. But most important is the providence. You know, when you are looking after a family, 
when you go to even young ones, some of them going to school, of course school was suspended, but now they are at home, caring and providing for them with staffs and you don't know where you are going to get the providence from. And somehow the Lord provides. And in between the lockdown, about <laughs> about a month ago, not even a month, before the, the, when they opened, the president opened up, I received a call from the UK, a friend of mine was telling me that I'm sure things are not easy in Uganda. I want you to go to my shop in Kampala and pick something. He said, no, oh, oh. I, I will not go. I said, no, can we go? But deep inside me, I said, no, I will not go. And then there was another lockdown. So I, there was no way I could go to the shop when it was closed. He came to the best time with me. And to one day I said, no, after Sunday here, I'll be driving there. So I went there. And I thought I was going to pick a shirt. But he, he called them from UK. Let him, let the man of God pick whatever he wants. This was about two months ago. And this is the first time I'm putting this one on. <laughs> Uh, he gave me a, a, a shoot, he gave me shirts, neckties, shoes, and everything. I called him and said, but I, said, I know what you're going through, you people in Uganda. And I thought of you during this lockdown and said, maybe I should give you something. I was so happy. Actually, I wanted to put this one on on Independence Day. But this somehow, I don't know how I was. The Holy Spirit talked to me that maybe Pastor James will be calling me to the public to talk about what God has made for me. <laughs> so I put it on. Um, uh, I felt so good. I felt so good. But that's just one of the things. We've got friends, and I want to preach and talk about it. The friends who've been calling and driving from villages with the pickup of food. Hopefully, we've been doing that the same to our friends and neighbors. You know, we had a culture of throwing away food. Then one day I took the, 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 the mistress working with the preparing our food. That's not good to throw away food. If you feel you are going to throw it away, at least prepare little and give some to the neighbors. And it does work. But people go to their then it tells it caught up of whatever is cooked and throw away the rest. In my dusty bin behind was a fighting ground for dogs, village dogs, which are not looked after well. They could go and fight for food in that dusty bin. But now that one is no longer the case because of that. Some things happen to you and they open up your eyes. The culture of thinking of friends was Awakened in my heart. We should keep on looking and providing for our neighbors. May, may I take the opportunity, I know mean, the time is up now, to remind you that we are towards Christmas now, the moment we enter this month. Therefore, start preparing for the Christmas party for the less privileged in our society. We always give back to them. So this Christmas, we should give them, we should give back to them again in the spirit of the awakening spirit of giving and assisting friends and neighbors. Thank you so much. I thank God for that. That's a lesson, is it? And so Pastor Charles, this is one thing I'm wondering. What does the phone number for friend? But we ought to be thankful. And we ought to be helping others also. Now even here in our church, we've gone through some hard times here in lockdown. There's been, but well, really every month, we're lacking the money we need. But somehow God keeps providing. Huh? God continually provides. Now I think about this this week, and I called Pastor John Bosco this morning. And uh, Pastor John Bosco was the one who normally he'll call the other pastors for me when we have our conferences and things. And he helps me keep in touch with other pastors um, here in Uganda. And so I told Pastor Bosco this morning, I'd like to get a list of 30 of our churches 
and do something. And right now, um, I like to send each one of those like 50,000 each. Um, this one person's hand. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know if our church was struggling, other churches are struggling. Yeah. And it may not be a lot right now, but this is something to encourage them, to let them know that we love them, we're praying for them, we're thinking about them. Because I know there's some who have been very discouraged. I thought to some. And I just thought that would be an encouragement. And so today, you know, we'll be taking the offer this morning in our next service. Uh, but if you'd like to help with that, you can plan. And maybe you can get more than 50,000 to each one. Or maybe there might be more than 30 churches and need some help. Uh, that we might be able to help them. And so uh, be praying about that. But it's important to encourage others. It's important to help others. Someone once said when you have problems, give your way out to problems. Be good at to others. You know, you read what you want. So, you want someone to help you? Who are you helping? Huh? You want someone to be a blessing to you? Who are you a blessing to? Okay? Sometimes we get overwhelmed by our own problems. I wonder how I can make it. But we need to realize there's people out there worse off than us. Who are struggling more than us. And we can be a help to them. We can be a blessing to them. Amen. Now, I'm never he's a pastor. He gets extra time, okay? But uh, <laughs> does anyone else might have a blessing or something like to share this for a moment? That's your fine for a teacher. Yes. You can you can understand where you are if you want. This, uh, sometimes discouragement hits all of us, and sometimes it hits us too. And um, this past month, the Lord just kept on sending those little bits of encouragement to me. We received a phone call from the very first lady that we've ever baptized, that pastor baptized. She told us, this was like, 20 years ago that she was here. She got saved and baptized and then she left Uganda and went to England. And she said, for all this time, I've been faithful. I need to put my children and be raised in the church. And I just, that was just such an encouragement for my heart. And I, I just wanted to share with that with you. Some of you guys may eventually, you know, Sometimes people move, but stay faithful in church. And let your pastor know that you're being faithful in church. It's such an encouragement to our hearts. That was a blessing. I got that phone call a little bit ago. And uh, her name is Stacy. And she was the first one that got baptized here in our church. Actually, she didn't get baptized in our church. We baptized her. But we didn't even have a baptistry then. We were just getting started. And so uh, we have a church room zero. And I called them. And we baptized, I think it was like 7 a.m. Sunday morning we baptized her. Because she was leaving for England. She was like, Pastor, I have to get baptized. I want to be right with God. I want to get baptized. So we baptized her. A single young lady. She goes, we don't hear from her again until this, like this last month or so ago. And to find out, she was in the Independent Baptist Church. She has her children, they're faithful in church. That is a blessing, that's an encouragement. That's true, that remains. Right? But uh, anyone else? Maybe, maybe, maybe just a couple more. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to thank you for that in this period, God has helped me to be faithful. First of all, to learn how to trust Him with all my heart. Before, I used to trust God, but also my job. But, <laughs> but now, in this period, God has taught me a lesson that you have to trust in me. And I thank him for his provision financially and in other ways. I thank him for the lessons that at this time, I know who my friends are. And I know who are just there to, as to pass time with me. So I thank God for all those lessons. And again, I thank him that he has taught me to mature in the work and prayer. Because during this COVID-19, pastors were there, but not so close. So I could get my Bible, read, and pray. So that one, it was very good for me. Thank God for that. Um, anyone else? Any other word of testimony? 
you'd like to share? Yes. Praise God. I thank God for my life. I went for Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was successful. So I thank God for that. I'm glad you okay were praying for me. Yes, I see you were saying. Yeah. You are you saying anything? No? no? I thought you were moving that you want to stand up. <laughs> I think I have some, I mean, are you thankful for your pastor? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Now, there's always something to be thankful for. But sometimes we focus on other things. And especially during a time like this, with this coronavirus we've had, there's been many challenges. But one day you'll have to look back and you'll see how God has worked in your life. And then sometimes you're in, you're in that problem or just coming out of it. You may not see and understand the goodness of God. But one day as you look back, you'll be thankful for God has done. And there's so many things that just take for granted. Um, even church, you know. And now it's gone for several months, you know. Now we had them online, we had so few in person, or offices are so open. But you know what? We're more thankful for one another. We want to be more thankful for our church, for the opportunity to come together. You know, being thankful for one another is important. Encourage one another to pray for one another. To help one another. In Philippians chapter 4, we were reading there in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 a moment ago. In verse 2 it says, I beseech you, you yes, and beseech you that, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Have that Christ-like mind. Have that unity of the Spirit. Verse 3 says, I treat thee also true yoke fellow, help those women to labor with me in the gospel, but lament also my other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Talk about helping one another, being thankful for one another, praying for one another. These are things that are important. There's been several opportunities we've had during this lockdown to help other people. And there's something that we've tried to do. As we've heard of different problems, different challenges, we've tried to be that help as much as possible. And then, thank you. Now I'm going to say this next hour in our morning service, the importance of thankfulness. I'm just going to make mention of it right now today, in this hour. But next hour, there's some things we're going to see about thankfulness that actually protects us. That it helps us in our Christian life. Mm -hmm. What about Philippians chapter 4, verse 4? Rejoice in the Lord. What's that next word? Always. Always. Except for coronavirus. <laughs> no. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. And again, I say, now, remember, who is God using to write this book here? The Apostle Paul. Where is Paul writing this book from? Huh? Is he in Sheraton Hotel? Maybe he is down here at the beach, sipping a soda, writing down, rejoicing the Lord. Huh? Where is he? In prison. For what I'm praying? Preaching the gospel. It's not nothing wrong. He was being unjustly persecuted. And he says, rejoice in the Lord. Hmm. It's not easy to rejoice in the Lord when you're passing through problems. It's not easy to rejoice in the Lord when others are treating one fairly. Or you think they're treating one fairly. It's not always easy to rejoice in the Lord when you see someone helping others, but then it's like, what about me? <laughs> you feel left out? You feel some problem? Whatever it might be. But rejoice in the Lord all. You ought to rejoice in that brother or sister in Christ and God is blessing. Amen? Like Pastor Charles, he can assume to the clothes and shoes. And that's a blessing to me. We want to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Not only rejoicing when things are going good for us. You know? And so rejoicing in the Lord. 
being thankful for one another. Look in James chapter 1 and verse 17. The book of James chapter 1 and verse 17. Now love this verse here. Book of James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from church. Know what it says? <laughs> from above. And coming down from the Father of lights, the humans will burn with us in the shadow of turning. Now, I what that from sometimes, old Pastor Charles. Sometimes our church helps some people. And maybe we're not able to help others, so we don't know about others in need. And maybe someone else will help another person. And then it's like that loyalty goes to another person or to another organization. And you forget about church. Huh? Does that ever happen? Okay. We have different ministries. I remember years ago, when we were in this other building, uh, we had a special class, and there was a lot of people in that class. I wish I help people as we can. But then another group started helping some of those people in that class. You know what they did? They stopped coming to our church. And they went to that other group that was based in a different church. Why? Because they're giving them something. People sometimes follow a gift instead of following God. You need to understand that it's God who gave you that gift. Huh? Even through those other people, it's God who did that. That doesn't mean that you're faithful to other people. You're so faithful to who? The one who gave it to you, which was who? God. Oh, Pastor Charles gave me this thing. Was, now I'm going to follow Pastor Charles, uh, Pastor James Clinton. Pastor Charles knows my history. Pastor Alice now is the one I want to be loyal to. Pastor James, Pastor Charles, you know me. Why? Because they're gift. We start playing favors with one another. Sometimes people even leave the church. Well, who put up on their heart to give that gift to you? God. You shouldn't even that with me. Yes, we should be thankful. But I'm not going to shift my loyalties to something or someone else because of a gift that some person or some institution gave me. I'm still going to be thankful to who? To God. Because who gave it to me? God. I told you that story some time ago. There was a lady, a little lady, who was struggling. And she was older in years. And she was struggling, and she was always praying. Huh? And she prowled out. And her neighbor didn't even hear her praying. And her neighbor was not saved. Her neighbor didn't even want to believe in God. Her neighbor was, he didn't want to hear this woman even praying. But all the time in here, oh God, help me, and this and that. And, you know, she didn't, he didn't hear her praying for times. Not for buying, not for this. So one day he said, what do I want to do? I'm going to get some food and put it on the porch. So he got some food and put it on the front porch for this lady. She comes home, she sends the food there. She says, praise the Lord, thank you God, thank you Jesus for what you've done. And the man is standing there thinking God. God didn't do that to her, I gave it to her. Why is she thinking God? Huh? He said, this woman doesn't understand. It's not God who gave her that, it was me. Hmm. So he starts thinking about that. He's not that. So then again, he thinks, you know what? I want to do it again. Some weeks went by. He knows she's having problems again. So he says, I don't want to do this again, but I'm going to teach her a lesson now. So he went, he bought the food, he put it on the front step. She comes back to her house later that day. She sees the food. She says, Praise the Lord. Thank you, God, for what you've done. The man jumps out and says, Aha, now you. It wasn't God who gave you that food, it was me. Ah, she gets a new smile. She said, Thank you, God, for giving me this food and for making the devil pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> she still knew it came from God. But that God used that man who was acting from Satan, who was trying to discredit God even, he used that man to provide God to someone who was against him, even to do his will. And this woman's like, praise God, what is that? 
She did not shift from hell to him say, oh, now I have to leave this man. Oh, now I have to leave my church. Why, oh, what God you want to provide for the prosecutor to this one? No, it comes from who? From God. It's not just from me. It's not from Pastor Charles. It's not from Pastor Alice. It's not just from our church. It's not just from someone else. It's from God. Who enabled them to give? Who was it that blessed them? Who was it that spoke to their heart? It's God. And yet one person helps us and another doesn't for whatever reason. And we get upset with one and we're leading toward another. Have you ever thought that maybe God put something on someone's heart to help you? And that other person, maybe you're upset with how they didn't help you? God put something on their heart to help someone else? Huh? Are you into it? It's not that God is not working through people. It's not that people aren't helping others. We just get mad when they don't help us. <laughs> and yet there's other people who help us, and then we want to follow other things. That's not how it's supposed to be. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. Anytime I help others, you know what I try to always do? I pray. I see God's will. There's been times I've wanted to help others, so there's times God says no way. And then I've seen God help those people through other ways. There's been a few times I've not wanted to help someone, and God said, You help them. And I did. <laughs> but we want to pray about what you do. Because even whatever I have is not mine. It's what God has entrusted me with. And I can use that as God desires and for his honor. In everything we do, we have to pray. We have to help one another. We have to be there for one another. We have to rejoice a little. But remember, it's the goodness of God. It's because of God that we have what we have. Huh? It's God who provided that suit for Pastor Charles. Yes, God worked for your friend to do what? To encourage your servant to the Lord. Huh? It's God who helped you with that food. Maybe it came from our church, maybe from another person, maybe from someone else, I don't know. But it's God who put that upon the heart. It's God. This ought to help us to be more thankful to the Lord and to rejoice in the Lord. I'm telling you, every one of us should be raising our hand like, I have something to be thankful for. God has been good to me. I mean, I paid my rent, I got food, I have clothes, I have this, I have what. Why? Because of who? God. No, 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 it was my neighbor gave me. No, it was my boss. No, I got the job, I provide my own. Who helped you to get that job? Who gave you the abilities that you have? The wisdom, the strength that you have, the abilities that you have, that came from God. The ability you have even to make wealth comes from God. Everything is because of God. And we need to learn to rejoice in the Lord. But so many times, what do you have to be thankful for? Oh, I should let you tell you many problems. But you should always have something. That's an idiot of the problems. Uh, but you know, I can even rejoice that God has given me the grace that I need to pass through my problems. You know that? I mean, if you, you read about different people, and it's not even just in the Bible. You read about times past where Christians were persecuted for their faith. They tied them to a, a wooden post. They put firewood around them. They light the fire to burn them alive. And those people, those Christians are standing there singing and praising God. As they're being lit on fire. You read the story of the apostles. They tell them to no more preach in Jesus' name. And they're saying, Why well, to obey God rather than men? And they're beaten. And they go and they're rejoicing that they're coming worthy to suffer for Christ's name. That's a different way of looking at it. <laughs> I suffer, but praise the Lord for what is done. 
Praise the Lord that through me the word of God is worn out. Praise the Lord for the grace He's given me to make it this far. There's others who struggle. There's others who are suffering. And they don't have that same grace that you have. Maybe they're not saved. There's people who look at Christians sometimes and they think, how can you have a slave? How can you be thankful to God? I mean, look at your problem. And they think, what is wrong with this person? And then they start thinking, how can they be this way? You know, they, I say I'm saved. I say I'm, I go to church, but there's something different about that person. You know, people start to notice. They start to see Jesus in you. They start to see something different about you. When they can rejoice in the Lord. Even in difficult times. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything. In what? In everything. By prayer and supplication. With what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Uh, let your request be made known unto God. Yes. In everything. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Every time I pray, I ought to be thankful to God. Every time I pray, I should be thankful for the goodness of God. There's times of struggle, yes. But God is still good. God is good, what? Huh? All the time. All the time, God is what? Amen. But does that mean that all the time we're happy? <laughs> that means that we never have problems? No. But even in the midst of our trials, even in the midst of our problems, God is good. You know, I went through challenges in my life. I've had a lot of problems. Challenges in ministry and my life. But you know what? Because of those problems, we now have that land in Aruba. 80 acres of land. We have a youth camp where people are being reached with the gospel. That land up there, there's been many problems up there in years gone by. Not because of us, but before we were there. And they want to sell that land. They want to get rid of that land and sell it to some farmer or some other person. So that person up there asked our missions director that we have for our NGO. They said, you know anybody who knows how to do problems, who's had problems before, they can help us to take care of our problem. And our mission director said, I know a guy, Pastor James. He's had problems before. He's dealt with a lot of problems. He knows how to take care of problems. Let me contact him and you can talk to him. And they contacted me and I said, you know what, that land was purchased for a purpose. There's a reason why that home is bought. People have made sacrifices, they suffer to build that place, and that place needs to be used for God, and we'll take it. And they sold that land to us. Why did we get that land? Because we suffered problems. Because they said, let us get someone who can help us with our problem. When you're having problems, you look for someone who can help you with your problems. Someone who's been through the same problem you're having, or been through greater problems. Who can help you? And because we're past the problems, now we have opportunities that we wouldn't have had before. Now we have that land where teenagers have gone up there. They got to say, lives have been changed. Young people have surrendered their life to serve God full time in the ministry. Lord willing, next year we'll be starting this Bible college up there also. More and more things are going to be going on. Why? Because we passed through some problems. And we came through and we're still serving God. Problems sometimes equals an opportunities where we can do even more for God. Or we can help other people as they are suffering and having problems. Hmm. Sometimes we're away from problems. Let me tell you, those problems will always find you. <laughs> you can't hide from them. They're going to be there. But you can face them through the power of God. You can face them with the grace of God. 
He can pass through every trial, through every tribulation, as a believer should in a proper way. If you're trusting in God. And you can even rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Even if you're in a prison. Even if you've been forsaken by family, by friends, whoever it might be. Because you're trusting in the Lord to take care of you. Your trust is in God. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by the prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Look at verse 7. And the what? The peace of God. If you're going through a trial or some hardship and you don't have the peace of God, that means you're not giving it to God. Are you getting it? Because in this first verse, don't worry, be careful from nothing, don't worry. Prayer and supplication, that's your request that may not hold to God. But Bible talks about casting your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Here, and the peace of God. Which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now I'll be honest with you. There's times I have to keep giving it back to God. <laughs> There's times problems or trials come. You say, okay, God, I'm giving it to you. And not even two minutes later, you're oh. and I catch myself, I'm like, okay, well, I'm sorry, I'm giving that back to you now. God, I'm trusting you. God, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm rejoicing in you. It's not easy. But it's called trusting God. And you know that all things work together for what? Good to the blood of God. Then we're calling it for There's many verses we can look at today. It doesn't matter the trial, the tragedy you're facing today. With God, all things are possible. You can make, you can come out even stronger, even better than ever before. You can do it with Christ. I can do all things through who? Christ. Through Christ. It doesn't matter if it's coronavirus. It doesn't matter if it's persecutions. It doesn't matter what it might be. You can make it through Christ. Hmm? But that's the thing we have to understand. It's through Him. It's not through my strength. It's not through my wisdom. It's not through my finances. It's not through my friendships. It's through Christ. Through Christ, I command it. And there's times your friends may not be able to be there for you. Maybe they're not right with God, or maybe God has told them, don't do anything right now. Let me tell you this, there's times God wants to make himself cool to you. There's times when God wants you to know it's all him. I've been there before. Oh, more than once. Where I just knew. That's God. And we know it's God who does all things. We know it's God who works with people. But if some of you even could maybe look in your life and you look back and think, wow, that was God. And there's times God tells others, you just sit down. Guys, you just wait till you're behind. Let me do this one. I don't need to work for you all. I can work on my own. God can do all things. That's all. And so don't get upset with your brother or your sister in Christ. Don't get upset with other people. Uh, you pray to God. Because if they want to help you, maybe it's God who's putting that on their heart. Uh, so many times you run to others before we run to God. Why don't you run to God first and ask God what would you have me to do? And maybe God might say, go to this one, go to that one. Or God might just say, wait on the Lord. Huh? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Smile on things and eagles. They shall not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sometimes that's all we can do. Or you might try everything you can and you fail. But what do I do now? Just, just be patient. Just trust God. Just wait. Oh, I'll be honest. I don't like to wait. <laughs> if I have a problem, I want to fix it now. Huh? Is that how we are? Yes. Oh, it's not easy to wait. But 
but it's right. It's biblical. I don't have to push something. I don't have to do something wrong. I can learn to be patient and wait on God. But that doesn't make it easy. This is the thing. Do right. Philippians 4 8. Find the brother. What sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good report? There be any virtue, there be any praise, think on what? These things. Those things which have both learned what? Like these things we're talking about this verse. And receive and burn and say to me, what? Do. Do when everything is going well for you. Do when you have no problems? No. Do and what? And the God of peace shall be with you. Are you getting that? You do it and the God of peace shall be with you. You have that peace of God in your heart. When you have problems, they can't serve God. Then you can't afford not to serve God. And when you're having problems, that's when you need to draw closer to God. Hmm? That's what you need now. To be closer to Him. Okay? Because as I do the things God wants me to do, as I do right, what other people are doing right? That's a matter of what other people are doing. Uh, it's like sometimes I, I've heard about how police do. And I just see even in America. The police may come and they want to talk to you. And you might say, but even the neighbors are doing it. And they say, okay, we'll talk to the neighbors, but today we're here for who? You. You can say, oh, by the other people. And God can say, okay, I'll do it to other people later. But right now I'm just talking to you. When I stand before God one day, I can't hide behind Pastor Jones. <laughs> I can't say it to someone else's fault. No. I have to be faithful to God. I will stand before God. That's right. I must do what is right. That's right. And listen. <laughs> Thank you. So I have to do what is right. Are you getting it? It doesn't matter what others do. Do right all the time. Do right, do right, do right. Not according to what you think, but according to this book. Because the ways of man, we justify our ways in our own eyes. Huh? The cause of man, we're always just in our own way. But you look to the Word of God. You guys have got the counsel. And the multitude of counselors are this right. Safety. You go talk to some other pastors. You go talk to some other people. You talk to some people who are serving God, who are doing what's right. Huh? But you know what? We need to learn to be thankful. We need to learn to rejoice in the Lord. And I'm excited today because we're here in church this morning. I'm excited about the goodness of God. And this morning, uh, in this next message, in our morning message, we want to see how thankfulness actually helps us. We want to see what thankfulness can protect us from. Okay? We talked about we should be thankful, but what are the benefits? You get me? And it's amazing as you read God's Word, as you study God's Word, what these things can protect you from. That's what I'm praying. As we pray to close this lesson this morning, now let me ask you to pray for Pastor Amos, who's uh, the youngest daughter, not feeling well. Um, they took her to the clinic yesterday. We prayed for her, and um, let us continue to pray for one another. And Father, we love you. We ask that you bless us this morning, Lord. I thank for each one here. I pray that you help us to be thankful to rejoice in you. I ask that Pastor Alice will be started, Lord. Help her to be uh, doing well. Help her to uh, strengthen her, Lord. I ask you to bless her. And give others, Lord, who are maybe missing today because of sickness or some challenges, that you bless them, be with them. And uh, help us, Lord, to be faithful in church. Help us to be thankful to you. Ever rejoicing. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll take a short break. We'll have a morning um, message here and our morning service starting in about 10 minutes. Thank you.